I was afraid you wouldn't come. From actress to first lady, she was quite an influence on U.S. history. I was so obsessed with his safety. We'll take a look back at Nancy Reagan's legacy. Kentucky's presidential caucus defies turnout expectations. Just how many people showed up to vote? Uh, it's tiring because he's like, you have these steps that are right there. Getting to class will soon be easier for students at Kentucky State University. We'll show you plans for a new walkway to campus. This is WQIT News at 6. She was one of the most influential first ladies in U.S. history. You're watching WKYT News on the CW Lexington. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Former first lady Nancy Reagan died this morning at her home in Los Angeles. She was 94 years old. Kenneth Craig takes a look back at Mrs. Reagan's legacy in our top story at six. She arrived in Hollywood as Nancy Davis and was already a working actress when her future husband entered the scene. I was afraid you wouldn't come. She acted in 11 feature films before becoming a full-time mother to Patty and Ron, then First Lady of California, and a few years later, First Lady of the White House. I, Ronald Reagan, do solemnly swear. Two months after his inauguration, President Reagan survived an assassination attempt, the scare that helped shape Nancy Reagan's self-appointed role in the White House. As personal protector for the president, she reviewed his schedule and consulted an astrologer for advice on security. I was so obsessed with his safety that any time he went out of the house, I think my heart stopped. That devotion went both ways. Friends called the Reagan's marriage the greatest love affair in the history of the American presidency. As they settled into Washington, Mrs. Reagan launched an ambitious renovation of the White House, then moved on to the anti-drug project that became a part of her legacy. Her Just Say No campaign swept across the country and into schools, eventually bringing her to the United Nations as the first first lady to address the General Assembly. She stayed on the sideline of political policy, but was there when her husband couldn't find the words. Getting everything we can. Doing everything we can. A few years after leaving the White House, Ronald Reagan announced his battle with Alzheimer's disease, and Nancy devoted herself to nursing her husband as his mind slipped away. That's the worst part about this disease. There's nobody to exchange memories with. After Ronald Reagan's death, she put herself at odds with other Republicans by pushing for federal funding for stem cell research to try to find a cure for Alzheimer's. We've lost so much time already, and I just really can't bear to lose any more. Chris Martinez, CBS News. Many Kentucky leaders are remembering the former first lady. Nancy Reagan visited the Bluegrass State back in the 80s to help her husband's presidential campaign. WKYT's Mike Byer looks back at her visit and at how state leaders are paying tribute to her. He continues our top story team coverage. After battling a heart condition, former first lady Nancy Reagan has died at the age of 94 in Bel Air, California. Assistant Allison Borio says Miss Reagan died at her home of congestive heart failure. Her marriage to the late president, Ronald Reagan, lasted 52 years until his death in 2004. Miss Reagan was no stranger to the bluegrass. In November of 1984, as the first lady, she visited Shriners Hospital in Lexington. Her visit was a part of a trip to wind up a solo political campaign for the upcoming election, which was the following week. The contest was between the incumbent president, Ronald Reagan, and former vice president, Walter Mondale. Meanwhile, several state leaders have already shared their condolences. Governor Matt Bevin tweeted out, First Lady Nancy Reagan was a woman of great dignity and class. America has lost a true gem, but our loss is heaven's gain. Rest in peace. Senator Mitch McConnell released this following statement. Today, Nancy and Ron are together once more, and we offer our most sincere condolences to the friends and family left behind. CBS News writes after her husband's death, Ms. Reagan became an advocate for stem cell research and the hopes of finding a cure for Alzheimer's. At the live desk, Mike Byer, WKYT. Other political leaders are paying their respects to the former first lady. You can see their comments and condolences on our website, WKYT.com. You can also see them using the WKYT News app. You can download it for free in the app or Google Play stores. The votes are in, and it was close. Last night, Donald Trump came out on top in the Kentucky caucus. Trump and Ben Carson, who suspended his campaign last week, were the only two candidates to visit the Bluegrass State. 
The state's Republican leaders worried there would be a low voter turnout, but overall they say 229,000 Kentuckians voted yesterday. That's more than voted in the 2012 Republican primary. Kentucky's Democratic presidential primary is May 17th. Spring is in the air. We saw temperatures climb into the 50s today, and tomorrow it's going to get even warmer. WKYD's Mike Linden is tracking a beautiful start to the work week. That's right, Chris, and that is what it looks like as we transition from the late winter into the early spring. It's still technically the late winter, but it didn't feel like it much today. Right now, we look at our live sky camera. A beautiful evening right now over Big Blue Nation. Our live sky camera pointing toward downtown Lexington. Still some clouds in the air, and that is going to help us with our temperatures overnight tonight. We look at Defender, though. Really not much going on precipitation-wise. The clouds are out there, but again, it looks like a relatively quiet night as we work our way through the next several hours. Warm air, though, continuing to work its way in from the south. And that big blue H on the map there, that's high pressure. And as that works its way closer to the Carolina coast, that's only going to emphasize the warm air moving in from the Gulf of Mexico. So that high pressure ridge going to prove to be crucial here the next few days. Temperature still holding on to the mid to low 50s, which is normal this time of year. But coming up, I'll break down with what looks to be a big switch in our pattern as we start to feel a little bit more like spring as temperatures make a surge toward the 70s. That's coming up in about 10 minutes. It is a path designed to keep students safe. Starting this week, crews will work on a walkway above US 60 in Frankfurt that leads to Kentucky State University. WKYT's Sean Moody is taking a look at the plans. Just like any college campus, students at Kentucky State University do a pretty good amount of walking. Uh, that's where we have like English and all that. Stuff like that. Student center is actually right there. For a lot of students, that includes getting across East Main Street. There is a tunnel that goes underneath. It's a pretty good workout. Uh, it's tiring because it's like you have these steps that are right there, and then you have more steps that go up either to the student center or to Hathaway, and so it gets tiring after a while. But it's better than trying to dart across the street. I've seen a couple people do that. No, yeah, it's not a very it's smart idea. But. Starting this week, though, the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet will work to make things a little easier. This $5.1 million walkway will have an elevator as well as stairs. Kentucky State University President Raymond Burr said the walkway will increase safety. Oh, I like that. I like that. Yes. The traffic here on Main Street really isn't bad on a Sunday, but on a weekday, it's a totally different story. When that walkway goes in, it'll take students right up over the top of Main Street straight into Hathaway Hall. Students said they think the fresh look may help recruiting as well. It's like, it looks kind of like the future kind of, like it shows that we have a lot, a big future coming ahead. I think the more of a profound look that you have on campus, the more students you attract. In Frankfurt, Sean Moody, WKYT. The transportation cabinet expects to complete the walkway by January 2017. A Lexington woman is helping families in Flint. Renita Allen is collecting water this weekend. She plans to drive it by the truckload to Flint, Michigan. Many there are still dealing with lead ridden pipes and are unable to use the water coming into their homes. WKYT's Caitlin Sentner caught up with Allen in Operation Flint. They live in Lexington but have close ties to Flint, Michigan. They're hoping they can get some water there to help relieve some of the burden. Five months later and hundreds of residents still cannot drink water from their taps. Operation Flint in Lexington wants to help. They don't have a goal in mind for how many households they want to reach, other than reaching as many as they possibly can. The group has been collecting water to take to Flint, and this week they'll finally have that opportunity. Late Sunday afternoon, they loaded a large tractor trailer with close to 800 cases of water. Donations had come in from all over. Ronita Allen, who has family living in Flint, says it warms her heart to see the contributions. When we who do not have contaminated water tap our faucets, it's free flowing. So put ourselves in their situation to not be able to tap your faucet and receive free flowing water to bathe or to cook or to provide for your babies. It's different, it hurts. It hurts. The trailer will be in Lexington until Thursday, and then it'll be on its way to Michigan. Church members will follow on Friday morning. In Lexington, Caitlin Setner, WKYT. 
There is a Democratic presidential debate tonight in Flint, Michigan. Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton will take the stage around 8 on CNN. One of UK's biggest fans participated in a big reunion this weekend. We all know Darren Moscow, the UK boogeyman, for his dancing and his love of the Wildcats. Last month, he was dancing inside Rupp when he took a spill with a young fan. Last night, he and that fan, 10 year old Aubrey Derrickson, reunited for the first time since the spill. Moscow gave Derrickson and her mom matching necklaces. I was worried, but I'm glad I hope found out we were both all right. That's the whole thing. I'm glad that he was okay, though. I was kind of afraid that he wasn't okay. He was breathing pretty hard. After yesterday's game, the pair took a picture together on the floor of Rupp.